Um, how many um, Super Bowls did the Jets and Giants win in the 2000s, Jason? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Babe Ruth, that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> We're 100 years ago. <laughs> That's count. how long it took. Rick, it doesn't count. We never I'm forget. I'm a Padres fan, uh, so what do you guys even care what I do? Yeah. Is this recording? Rick. We've been recording all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Welcome to Travel Matters, the official podcast of T-Bex. Here are your hosts, the radio vagabond, Palabo and T-Bex CEO, Rick Calvert. Welcome to another exciting episode of Travel Matters. We have three people on this one. It's Jason Rupp, it's Rick Gasarian, and it's Yash Demon from The Poor Traveler. But first of all, good to see you, Rick. Good to see you, Pally. Let's, uh, before we, we, we start with the first uh, of the two interviews that we've, we've done, uh, I wanted to ask you that... Um, I know that something uh, interesting is coming up for TBEX uh, North America, where um, you're doing something before the conference for... Yeah, tell me about it, Rick. Yeah, so a few years ago in um, Killarney, Ireland, we did something called TBEX Summit. And it was an invitation-only event. It was only for advanced-level very experienced bloggers and it was a huge success everybody loved it it's not an actual presentation or series of presentations it's a discussion uh, we pick three or four topics that are current and important to creators and we have a moderator and um, we bring up the topic and we throw the questions out to the group mm-hmm What does everybody think about this? And, you know, the hardest people to serve at TBEX or really any conference are the most advanced level people because the reason you're advanced is you know a lot of stuff already. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so the best way for you to learn is from your peers, from other people who are doing things at the same level as you. Right. And they're you know, have some insight to, you know, maybe something related to SEO or something related to creating their content or sponsorships or whatever it may be. And um, mm-hmm. we found it was extremely valuable. Everybody who went the last time absolutely loved it. And we've been trying to figure out the right way to do it. And um, it, I don't know why we didn't think of it years ago, because it was so obvious once we figured it out. Is the day before the conference, we will have an invitation only Half day, TBEX summit yeah. for advanced level creators. Now that you say invitation only, yep. if somebody is listening to this and thinking I am advanced, but what if they forget me? What if they forget <laughs> to invite me? Is there a way that people can say, "Hey, yeah, if if you think I'm advanced enough, please don't forget me." Yeah, we'll have an application. Right. We'll put an application up on the site. People can contact us, say, hey, I think I'm ready for this and I'd like to participate. And they can submit an application through there. I think it's a very good idea because the community is really a community that shares. Absolutely. And uh, having a conversation like that with uh, other people who are on the same level as you, it could also be mid-level or, or beginner level, uh, just as long as uh, you're you're able to share your experiences and um, give each other some pointers. Uh, really interesting. Yep, absolutely. And what we'll do is we'll we'll take notes during the discussion and when we're done, we'll put out a white paper based on what we all agreed were those best practices. So right. we'll have more news on this, but I, you know, we just wanted to let people know we made a decision. We're definitely going to do this in uh, Eau Claire and um, hopefully it'll be the first of many to come and just a new addition to what we do at TBEX. Let's dive into the interviews. Here's Jason Rupp and Rick Gasserian. We're back at TBEX in Thailand, in Phuket, Thailand, with two Americans who love this country. Jason Rupp, Rick Gazarian, welcome, guys. Thank you so much. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I, you know, uh, 
Let's start with you, uh, Rick. And it's R-I-C, not R-I-C-K, like you, Rick. I'm 25% more efficient when writing my name. <laughs> Think about that, Rick. That's right. I didn't lo- choose you- it. I didn't either. I changed it. You did not. Oh, yeah. Really? Sure. Just well, so I you mean, didn't my, have to write as many letters? My birth certificate name is Richard. My oh. parents said Rick as my nickname. And then in junior high, I dropped that K off. Well, mine is Kenneth, so... You, Kenneth? I got you. I'm confused. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be another episode about Rick. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, uh, what was your name, Jason? Hi, I'm Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Not spelled J A Y, but J A S O N. And your mama named you Jason. Yeah, she did. Yeah, it's it's that's that's the name she f- finally chose. Yeah. Your lovely mother while. Carla, who's and, one of the most beautiful people to attend T Bex. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, T Bex Mama. Yes, yeah. Grant, and, yeah. and you guys, you 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 both love this country. Uh, Jason, you you are a, a YouTuber, and you do so much content from uh, Thailand. You keep coming back to this country, uh, and uh, and Rick, you 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 live in Bangkok. Uh, so, what is it about this country that makes you, Jason, come back all the time? Oh, it's just magical. I I first came when I uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, and I went to Thailand and Malaysia and Indonesia, and, and I, I loved it all. I, uh, but Thailand just keeps you coming back. Everybody's just welcoming, friendly. The food is incredible. Fast food is actually fresh food here, and, and, it, and it just makes you feel good. I love all the spices, and and just it, it, they call it the land of smiles, and it, and it really is. And, and if someone's not smiling in Thailand, you smile at them, and they smile back at you. Yeah. Do you agree? I do. I, I believe there's a genuine warmth and happiness and friendliness with every, virtually all the people you interact with on a day to day basis. Yeah. And, you know, it's a pretty nice, pleasant thing, like the, the laid backness or casualness of the interactions. So, was that why when you came here, did you come on a one way ticket to, to, to live in Bangkok or did you? Visit and then fell in love. And when you came back home to Boston, you thought, ah, let me go and stay there. Pally, it's a bit of an origin story. I'll try and condense it. Imagine a cold, wintry day in Chicago where I was living. And I'm working out of my home office. And I'm like, what am I doing here? And recently I'd read a book called The Gospel of Father Joe about a priest in the 1970s who went to Bangkok and over the last 50 years has created this giant outreach program in the slums of Bangkok. And I said on that wintry day, I'm moving to Bangkok to volunteer for Father Joe. That's what got the ball rolling. That's that's really interesting because my my start in Thailand was also kind of about volunteer work in a way. I I did that uh, TEFL course to teach English, and then then I, I got a... A position, you know, un, unpaid, just expense, expenses. But well, they, they paid. They paid a little bit. But I, I was uh, an English teacher to refugee Buddhist monks in their temple in Bangkok, mm-hmm. and I had a temple. Uh, I had a classroom at the top of the temple every like two two hours at the end of the day, and it was beautiful. You could look out and see the sunset and, and teaching these monks. And yeah, I, I love that. I never actually worked as a, a paid English teacher, but I enjoyed that that kind of a service kind of spot. Mm-hmm. So, Jason, mm-hmm. I'm fascinated with your YouTube channel, bro. Oh, thank, thank you, Rick. Thank when you, you told me what you do, I'm like, I'm, I, I didn't know why you came to this conference. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, will you tell people what your YouTube channel is about? What do you talk about on your channel? Uh, well, or let's let's take one step back. What's the name of the channel? Uh, so, the name of the channel is Jason Rupp, and. That's pretty easy. Yeah, it, uh, you know, you know why it's, it's Jason Rupp because I, I never thought I would actually have a YouTube channel to, uh, to, to that would would be you know that anybody be watching. So it was just for family and friends. You just <clears throat> thought, hey, I'll put my name on this channel. Yeah, I just learned it was it was free to upload a video, and so I, I thought, well, I could make some some uh, in, make some uh, unique content and everything. So so I started doing that. So what kind of videos do you put on your channel? Well, it's a it's a it's a unique niche that I, that really I at the time I started it and now there's some some followers you know that 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 like my my Copy niche cats. you know yeah but I it was my my niche that I, I thought w- would be a, an interesting one and I and I just I just went through it I I just pushed it really hard and did so many videos so I have I have like a thousand videos of of travel and pamper so I, I travel the world and pamper myself so 
some people out there may not know what, what the word pamper is. You know, like I go around Asia, they don't know what pamper is. Mm-hmm. You, but it, you, but you it's get, about you taking care of yourself. You get a haircut, a shave. Mm. Yeah, you get a haircut, a shave, uh, the, a different therapy. A massage. Leech therapy, uh, mm-hmm. crazy massages, um, waxings, w- w- whatever. But, but I do travel content yeah. and pampering. So the, and and I, I really just, I really love it and all these experiences. I didn't know how to describe it until you just did. Travel and pamper. It makes sense to me now. Yeah, so I'm a middle-aged man traveling the world and pampering himself. What I tell people is Jason does videos of himself getting shaved on the beach by ladyboy barbers. Uh, <laughs> Not all the time. But uh, but that's the one that sticks out in my mind. <laughs> that's the one I remember as well. But, but no, I, I've seen you do massage videos. I've seen you do... Um, you know where they treat your feet, and you get. A sh- and I see. You, it's funny when you come to Tbex. Look, you're unshaven now, and your hair is getting long. Uh, I, I, it's my job, you know. Yeah, I, you, I can, see yeah, you let it grow, and then you go do a video. You right? cannot yeah. shave yourself. You have to. I would rather come here clean shaven, but I have no time to to, to go anywhere and do this. Yeah, I, I actually haven't shaved myself for for three, four years. But I mean, that's your content. You no, grow. I, I you grow a little, get a little, little fuzzy, and then you go get a shave. And video, great content. Yeah, I'm very careful, though, with, with my content on, on where I choose to do these videos at, though. So I, I rarely make a, a plan or a reservation or appointment. I, I, just, I just go to, maybe, maybe I go to five or six of these places a, a day, and, and, and maybe I choose one. Uh, I just walk in and, and, and get the feel of it. I'm looking for good, interesting personalities so, so people, can have a, people can watch an intercultural you know, uh, video. And, and not just in Thailand. You've done these videos all over the world. I've seen you do them in the States as well. Yeah, in the States, yeah. But people love my New York videos. But, but what I'm doing is uh, I'm looking for, for really unique uh, videos in, in that spot. So I'm looking for, for people that look interesting. Like we need, we, on YouTube, we want, a, we want a, a, a visual. Uh, we want beautiful visual. So that'll be interesting faces and, and mm-hmm. things like and colors, yeah. the lightings, the, the, the sound needs to be good. I, uh, that, that, that I, we, I guess we could do a whole podcast on so that. So now but. I know how to describe it, travel and pamper. And yeah. I've learned that actually it is a category. There, yeah. there are communities of guys who just like to talk about the best shaving products, the best techniques. Uh, same thing with haircuts. You know, I'm, I didn't get a haircut from the time I was, I think, 17 till 40-ish. <laughs> what? <laughs> So yeah, Rick Calvert the hippie, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I got to see those pictures. Long yeah. hair, yeah. yeah. Nice. Getting nice. Uh, haircuts like going to the dentist for me, yeah. uh, still. So, but I didn't realize that there was such a thing. But but there is this. It's not you're not a freak, which I thought you were at first. Some people think, yeah, yeah. No, there are a lot of. I mean, it, we're talking hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are interested in this. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so it, it's a travel. Uh, it's absolutely travel videos because I'm traveling and I'm and I'm doing this and it's just a different segment that that of of travel videos. People argue. Sorry, Pally. Just people um, ask all the time when they come to TBEX. A speaker will give a talk about their unique thing, like like you, and somebody will go, "How do I do something original?" And then I see you, and I'm like. Just figure it out. There's lots of things that haven't been done yet. Mm-hmm. You, you can't say everybody's done everything yet. There are things that are you're passionate about that are interesting to you that you can create content with that hasn't been done a million times before. Yeah, I guess that's a. Yeah, I, I could easily coach somebody on on really how to niche their their, their channel because because just like I'm doing travel and pamper, they could do like travel and coffee, travel and espressos, travel and and, and cats. You, you gotta you gotta choose. Choose some niche in travel, yeah. or or because it, it, it's too just like you don't you don't use the most popular hashtags out there. You look for some niche hashtags to to, to try to get those people. Yeah, you, you can't just use the word hashtag travel and and, and, and reach reach the whole travel market. All right, got to niche it. And and Rick uh, Rick Casarian Global Gas. Uh, that's your that's your travel blog, and then you do a podcast. Great, great podcast called Counting Countries, and we met in at, at a TBEX. We're TBEX friends. We met in Manila the first time. Boom! And then we've met in um, Chicago, in, Chicago, in London, London, in Berlin, Armenia, and l- the last uh, time we met that was in Armenia not that long because ago. Because Rick had a crazy idea to be a conference organizer. <laughs> you inspired me, Rick, Dude. with the K. What was the name of your event? It, yeah, it's called the Extraordinary Travel Festival with the tagline, 
the world's most accomplished, avid, and adventurous travelers. It really, again, another niche. It, you and Palais are definitely the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other folks. Yeah, Rick. Rick's been in your to tribe here. more countries than me. Uh, you, you, 152 out of 193 yeah, UN countries. I'm only on 115. So why did you do it in Armenia? Yeah, th- there was a logic to this madness. I am ethnically Armenian. Um, Gazarian. I a n Gazarian. My grandparents hailed from that region. I've been going every year to Armenia since '03. So there's only two countries in the world where I know kind of people in tourism. That's Thailand and Armenia. And I wanted to give back a little bit to my homeland by kind of promoting tourism. And Armenia seems a little more exotic than Thailand. 100%. Like fewer people have been there than have been here. Exactly. 100%. That was a great choice of a location, <laughs> Rick. You. Yeah. And the festival, the festival was um, unbelievable. The, the 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 people there were so accomplished travelers, and uh, and a lot of people think that country counters uh, just go in and out of a country real fast and ticks off a box. But these people really go and explore and some really interesting uh, talks. But but also just hanging out, drinking coffee with these people. And I was fortunate enough to do some podcast. Uh, where I interviewed some of the people there and it gave me an opportunity to speak to two people who had been to every country in the world twice. Um, and yeah, it, w- it was it was unbelievable. That sounds like a dream come true. I, I, now I want to go next year. <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking about changing my travel brand from travel and punished to travel and pamper. You sound a lot smarter than me, Jason. <laughs> I'm hanging out with the wrong guys. I'm doing Have you done a massage. video getting a shave on the top of Mount Everest, Rick? That's what I want to know. You, you, it, and it's really not at the same level, but I do have a series on my blog where I document getting haircuts in foreign countries. Okay. So Saudi Arabia, Bhutan, Burma, uh, Morocco, um, but not extensive. That's great. I, I got to uh, see that. Like Jason. But it's fun because, again, it's you're just taking a simple interaction, social interaction, which you do every day in your life, except for Rick mm-hmm. with the K and Pali. And it's... You, you want to see those little cultural nuances and differences, and it's fun, and you hang out with the people, you try and create that little bond for that 30 minutes, and you see the differences country to country. And Rick, that's not all you do. So you have your own site, you've done this conference now, and I think you said you're going to do it again, right? M- my hope and goal is 2024 to to have the second event. So keep us posted on that. <laughs> yeah. we'll do. You're also involved with our friend Ian with yeah. Travel Massive. You're like the local chapter organizer it, here in it, Thailand? Yeah, so I mean to get and this is all organic. So You're not busy I, enough. Yeah. I met Pale at T-Bex. I met Ian Ord, my first T-Bex 2014 when I had a blog for 3 months and of course knew nothing. And Ian and I have built up this relationship as really good friends over nearly 10 years as well as partnering together on his company, Where's Sidewalks End. I'm a investor, advisor. Oh, and uh, so I've been working with them during that time. Okay. Are you talking about the other Ian? Yes, I was talking about the other <laughs> Ian with Travel Massive. But I Ian Ward to- is another one. Yeah. So I have some very good friends named Ian, and you can see my poor listening skills, Rick. That's all right. Uh, Ian Cumming, um, who is an Australian who founder, founder of Travel, travel Massive, Massive yeah. an awesome travel. Did you also meet him at TBEX? Uh, unfortunately, I can't say that. I met him at a Travel Massive networking okay. event, which is such He's a been good, to a few. Which is such a good friend and partner of TBEX that counts the same. Yeah, absolutely. So I am the Asia coordinator and Bangkok chapter leader, creating and helping support networking You're the coordinator events. for all of Asia. That's what Ian has called me when we've had some beers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you haven't uh, joined Travel Massive or you don't know about Travel Massive, you should. It's an awesome community for the travel industry that Ian's been working on as a passion project for many, many, yeah. many years now. Yeah. Um, so Heart and soul. It is a great platform. And same thing, just like T-Bex, I've met a ton of great people through the Travel Massive community. So yep. both are awesome. One minute remaining for this appointment. One minute remaining. So both of them are awesome. We good? 
Yeah, it's 12 minutes past, and the, I think the keynote is in three minutes, so we better wrap okay. it up. Thank you so much, both of you, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your stories and your love for Thailand. Thank you both to Polly and Rick. Appreciate it. Thank Bye. you, Jason. Thank you, Rick. Bye for now. Keep on counting countries. Hey, now. Oh, look at you. Keep on counting countries. Keep on counting countries. Thank you for sharing Travel Matters with your friends and followers on social media. You're the best. Two interesting guys, Jason Rupp, the pampering uh, YouTuber, and uh, Rick Gasarian. Uh, I didn't understand what Jason did. You know, when he told me he did videos of getting shaved on YouTube, I'm like, I didn't get it. You know, we obviously we talked about it, but he, he explained it so well in that interview. He, it's about pamper and travel, or travel and pamper. And when he explained it that way, it, it clicked for me. I got it. Yeah. He gets massive audience. I mean, he gets a massive, massive audience. So uh, oh, there's yeah. a lot of people who are interested in, in his content. Yeah. And then I've. Of course, also Rick Kazarian that I had the pleasure of, uh, of of meeting also in Armenia for the the event that he put together for extreme travelers and uh, what, what was the name of his if, conference again? It was Extraordinary Travel Festival and. Mm. Um, Really an interesting place, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to get to do a lot of interviews with uh, these extreme travelers for my own podcast. So if you're interested in that, let me pluck that and, and talk about uh, going to listen to, uh, I think I did eight episodes from uh, Extraordinary Travel Festivals of uh, the Radio Vagabond. Where can people get that, listen to those episodes? The Radio Vagabond. Excellent. Yeah, Rick is a really nice guy. Yeah. He's been super involved in the creator community for a very long time. You know, he works with Travel Massive there in in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Um did his conference in Armenia, which is an amazing destination to have an event. Yeah. Yeah, it was we were really really good to talk to Rick. Yeah, and I I met him the first time at a Tbex uh, when when it was in Manila. So, yeah, we we became close friends after that. Yeah. Our last guest today is Yash Demon from uh the blog called The Poor Traveler and um Yash is uh, a very modest and humble guy but so talented and not a poor traveler anymore no 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 it was at breakfast one day in uh, in phuket and and shane came over and tapped me on the shoulder and pointed at uh, yash team and said do you know that guy because he is so talented you should have him on travel matter so <laughs> i went straight over and said to yash can you please come to the table we want to speak to you you know again we talked about it he's a very shy person he gets really nervous And then that makes him funny. Mm. You know, he talks a lot. Angie's the same way. Angie gets nervous and she talks a lot when she gets nervous. And uh, he's super funny, man. He just like says the first thing that comes to his mind without the filter. And um, very, very talented. But, you know, he shared in the keynote how rough COVID was for him mm -hmm. professionally and personally. But he stuck with it and has now recovered. Um, mm -hmm. But – That's an experience that so many of us went through with COVID. Um, anyway, we really, really like Josh. And I have some news for you. You do? I do. Josh will actually be giving a keynote in Greece. No way. Yes. So he was great on the panel, the, the closing keynote panel. Yeah. Everybody loved him. And so Shane has convinced him and he really is – Again, very nervous. He's already nervous about it, but we convinced him to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, Yash will be giving a keynote in Greece. Yeah, now, now, now he has to be nervous now that you've said it so many times. The pressure's uh, on, Yash. Nope. Yash, I know that you're listening. You are gonna crush it. Don't worry about yeah. it. Uh, and yeah. I can't wait to see him again. He's uh, he's a cool guy. Definitely. We're back at Tbex Asia, and next on uh, the podcast we have. A very poor traveler. <laughs> well, th th at least, Yash, that's the name of your, your blog. You're from the Philippines, so yeah. you call yourself the poor traveler. But you're very successful, so I guess you're not that poor anymore. <laughs> it's a funny story because um, um, people always think that it's just about budget travel. 
It wasn't. Uh, in my session, I talked about uh, the origins of, of our blog. And basically, it was after a series of misadventures that we decided to create a blog. And basically, it's like, you poor thing, you poor soul. <laughs> it's the poor traveler because it's always, something always bad happens. Like, for example, on our first trip, the, the boat didn't show up to pick us up. So we were stranded for three hours. At the that could be a problem. Warm. Yes. The second trip, we were st- stranded on a boat yeah. in the middle of the ocean for an hour at noon. And then on the third trip, uh, we found after, after the second trip, each and every trip that we had after that, it was always raining. So when we started to create a blog, we really wanted to just document the best adventures that uh, yeah. we experienced. Yeah. And then uh, and at the same time, share tips so people would not make the same mistakes that we did. So that's how The Poor Traveler was born. But people easily assumed it's about the budget. And so we embraced that. And yeah, that's, that's how it is. But it's actually funny with the, when, when I travel and, and collect stories and then something unexpected and uh, it wasn't supposed to happen like that that's when I have to remind myself oh my god I'm in, in the middle of a good story here <laughs> so I yes. bring out my microphone and start recording uh, sometimes I don't realize it until it's it's in the middle of it and I wish I'd rec- started recording before so yeah I, I get that people like the stories that are not super perfect all the yes. time not so polished mm. because most of us don't have a perfect trip when we go places, right? Our, we miss a flight. They lose our luggage. Yes. They don't have our reservation. Uh, things happen. Yeah. In the case of the Philippines and Southeast Asia, uh, we don't have a very powerful passport, right? So even before you start the trip, you could easily be offloaded or blocked from, from uh, boarding the plane just because uh, our own immigration would think that we would be overstaying in another country. So that's another thing. Uh, what we wanted to do on our blog is to provide a more Southeast Asian perspective. Because uh, um, at the time when we were starting out, there were a lot of travel bloggers, but many of them came from the West. So um, the, the perspective is very, uh, at the time, it was very like, you know, Nomadic Matt, uh, mm-hmm. Johnny Jet. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very inspiring, but we wanted to do something uh, like that, but from the point of view of somebody from the islands. Right. So, yeah. Definitely, there's a need for that. <laughs> and it seems to me, going around TBX Asia here uh, this week, that there are so many successful uh, people from, from, from the Philippines. Uh, why it's the Filipino you... mafia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to a video with uh, two of uh, Anton's people from, uh, from uh, our awesome planet about Boom vertical. and Sean. Yeah, yeah. Great, great session. And um, yeah, so many people come out of the, the Philippines. Why do you think that is? There's a study published by Hootsuite and We Are Social. I think We Are Social is a London-based uh, agency. So they do, the, uh, they do this, this study uh, every year. Uh, this year, they ask, um, they ask people, uh, do you follow, do you, are you on social media to follow some influencers? And number one of all the countries that they ask, number one is the Philippines. Really? So there are a lot of people in the Philippines who go on social media simply for the purpose of following the people that they love. We are a very uh, personality or celebrity-driven culture. Uh, we love our celebrities. We love our social influencers. And I think I'm lucky uh, that I, I, I come from that um, because um, uh, that's something that I could take advantage of. And then it's also something that I could twist, put a spin to it. Because most of the time, we, we truly obsess with uh, personalities and what they do with their lives. But um, it's seldom that we get to educate also on the side. So what we do is, um, yes, we, we want you to take a peek into our, our travel life. But we also want you to be able to do what we do. Uh, mm-hmm. Especially given that it's not that easy for us to travel. Unlike, you know, when you're coming from Singapore or maybe or from from Japan or from Korea or, or another country with a more powerful pass- mm-hmm. passport. So yeah. uh, what we do is we inspire people. We hope, we think we, we, we do that uh, just to, um, yeah, I talk a lot, sorry. No, you're doing good. You're doing good. That's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Josh. And, and during lunch, I, I was uh, having lunch with uh, Shane Dallas and he said, do you see that guy in a black shirt over there? 
he's an he's a superstar. He, his numbers are through the roof. So uh, you have to have him on the podcast. And by the uh, way, he's referring to Yash here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was he was pointing at you. So I went over and said, "You have to come to the table, and uh, we need to speak to you." But tell us a little bit more about when did you start the Poor Traveler? And uh, I guess you're on a lot of different social media platforms. Um, how big are you? How big am I? Yeah. Uh, About five foot six, <laughs> seven. Uh, that's a weird question because I just lost like 30 kilos. So that's like... Uh, Whoa. <laughs> really? Congratulations. Whoa. Yeah, but, um, you look great. Yeah. So uh, we we started in 2010 as travel bloggers. But even before that, I've been blogging about my personal life. Uh, you know, um, back in 2005, I was, I was in college. I had nothing else to do. I went on, into an internet shop, walked into an internet shop, created a blog, and just wrote about my college life. And then in 2009, I discovered travel because our company, uh, part of the perks uh, of the company that I used to work for, is to take their employees on a trip. Mm-hmm. And that's when I discovered that, oh, I, lo- I love I love it. And then um, on our first trip together, something happened, which was the, the, the first uh, three trips uh, that we did. Something always bad happened. So we decided to, to uh, document all those misadventures. And yeah, that's when the, the blog started. So um, pre-pandemic, we used to have 2 million views per month. Uh, it plummeted, of course, during the pandemic, but it's now back up to 1.2. So we're getting there. And um, we uh, the poor Traveler is just one of our blogs. We have a number but um, for our two main blogs uh, the uh, total number of followers is 2.6 million wow yeah. so, so that's why away. yeah so that's why your talk today was how to build a social media empire with your blog yes and by the way I think that's pretty important because a lot of people are now are talking about TikTok YouTube um, sub Substack hmm. you're still talking about your blog which something is something we inf- reinforce all the time is you don't own TikTok, you don't yeah. own Facebook, you don't own Instagram, you own your site. Yeah, for us, um, our main channel is really the blog. That's my life's work. Um, I love writing. That's where I put all my writings. And for me, all, those, all these social media channels, although they monetize on their own, we earn from them on their own. But for me, their role really is to drive traffic to our blog. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to think that, because um, you know, the, the, the online journey of a traveler, right? You dream, you plan, you book, and you travel, the actual traveling. And we want to be present in all those stages. Mm-hmm. So when in the dreaming phase, we want to be present, uh, we use Instagram. Here are the pictures, here are the reels, and these are the snippets of our trips. Our, and uh, if you want to do that, if you want to do it your, on your own, or if you want to do it yourself, Go to our blog where you can plan your trip. We have a lot of information that would help you plan your own trip or replicate whatever it is that we're doing. And uh, so that's a planning part. And you can also book on our blog because uh, pre-pandemic, uh, even now, like uh, the majority of our earnings come from affiliate programs. And that's, I'm very proud of that because it means we convert. We're the poor traveler, but our audience, they spend, right? So it's not like... Uh, it's not all about awareness. It's not all about I'm reading and then I exit. No, you can they, prove results. Yes. Yeah. They buy stuff from our blog. Yeah. And then that's it. So I'm really proud of, of, of our model, basically. I noticed that you say we a lot. Uh, you have a big team. Did, at, at, did you start it alone or with somebody? Or tell us a little bit so about that. So the idea started uh, for me. So um, I used to travel on my own, right? On my personal blog. And then uh, I met someone. Uh, he's, he's my blogging partner. And I just approached him and uh, basically made a proposal. Let's let's create a travel blog. I want to do this more often. And so we created this blog. And it was just the two of us for the longest time. And then in 2017, we decided to expand. And we hired, uh, in, the fir- uh, in the first months, just one person. But now we're a group of 11. And wow. six regular, six core uh Employees and um, five more on our payroll, uh, and we're very proud that in during the pandemic, uh, we entered the pandemic with 11 people, and even up to now we're still 11 people. We made a lot of sacrifices along the way, personal sacrifices, just to keep everyone because life's hard, especially in the, in the yeah. right? So we don't need, we don't, we, we we couldn't let go of anyone. 
So, uh, yeah, so... That's impressive. Yeah, they're, they're family to us. Yeah. Well, Josh, we really appreciate you joining us on the podcast. I know you told me you were nervous about your talk yeah, today. I, I'm shaking, guys. You don't see you it. You did great. <laughs> you did great. You, you're going to be in the closing keynote uh, panel this afternoon. You're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here at TBEX. And um, we'll look forward to your last talk this afternoon. Thank you so much, Rick and Pallet. Thank yeah. you. And that's it for this episode of Travel Matters. We'll be back next week with uh, Matt Gibson and Paul Pronkarn. I think you did that pretty good, Pale. I did, didn't I? <laughs> two other great guests, also two other great speakers. Uh, Matt did a uh, really interesting survey uh, before TBEX Thailand, and he presented the results in a session. And Paul gave some great data from PADA, the Pacific Asia Travel Association, where their members are DMOs of other countries and other cities in the Asia Pacific region. And um, he gave a really interesting data filled talk, and he was really funny. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a great conversation with him as well. And that's coming up next week. So until then, good to see you as always, Rick. And uh, I don't know if you heard the dog. He said, see you next week as well. <laughs> You've been listening to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. This episode of Travel Matters was hosted by TBEX CEO Rick Calvert and Radio Vagabond Palabo and produced by radioguru.co.uk. See more about upcoming TBEX events on tbexcon.com. You can follow Palabo on theradiovagabond.com. 